colleagues, the film we just saw is a chilling vision of our European future just 20 years from now. It does not have to be our future. We are not bound by that future. But we must act. Some of you may dismiss the film as science fiction, like Orwell 1984. But you must admit, the beginnings of everything in that film can be seen in Europe today, in 2016. Already in 2016, the steady erosion of our fundamental rights has begun. Collective bargaining, freedom of association, the right to strike, the right to safe work. Already in 2016, multinational companies are becoming unrestrained by national regulation. They play countries, one against the other, in a destructive race to the bottom. Already in 2016, we are not far from the video where it shows a vision of a neoliberal Europe. The dismantling of social Europe with the European Union reduced to just another free trade area, without protection for workers or real social dimension. My friends, I ask you, is this a future we accept? Is it the future we will accept? Resounding no. We are here to declare that we do not accept it. We are here to begin to change that future. Our work begins to gay, it begins right now. At our last conference in Toulouse, colleagues, we talked about being in the third year of a crisis, a brutal economic, social and political crisis. Unfortunately, today here in Rome, we are in the seventh year of that same crisis. Let us be clear about two important facts. First, one reason this crisis has not gone away is that permanent economic crisis benefits those who wish to see the European trade union movement weakened. Since 2008, many of us have been forced to take the strong medicine of austerity. But it has made us sicker, not well. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Tomorrow, our Greek bank unions will sign the first collective agreement for years. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Second, years of austerity and inequality have encouraged demagogues who want to erode trust in our values here in Europe. In doing so, they are providing political cover for cynical attacks on the European social model. This has led to the re-emergence of some of the darker forces in our history, xenophobia and racism. Just at a time when Europe faces mass migration, a humanitarian crisis unprecedented since the end of World War II. On this, we say here clearly that the trade union movement stands against all prejudice. Solidarity is indivisible. <laughs> the European Commission and some national governments have taken advantage of the crisis to embark on an anti-trade union campaign designed to rob us of our strength and to force us to fight for our very survival. In Spain, the government prosecuted hundreds of trade unionists. Organizers were put under threat of fines and even prison. This time, our Spanish colleagues sued in the Constitutional Court and won, upholding the right to strike. Anti-union legislation has advanced in countries in all parts of Europe from Ireland to Italy to Romania, Portugal to Lithuania. Even Finland, a country with one of the highest union density, has not been immune. I'm a member of Verdi now for 30 years, but I actually start work in the British TUC in the terrible era of Margaret Thatcher and John Major. Back then, 
It would have been hard to imagine things getting worse. But today in the UK, David Cameron wants to cripple unions in ways that even Thatcher would not have dared. This Tory government intends to fundamentally undermine the basic rights of workers to negotiate, to organize, and to strike. In fact, their proposed legislation will require union members to wear armbands on the picket line. I'm German, and as a German, the very idea of this makes me deeply uncomfortable. Not leaving Britain, our colleagues in the TUC warn us clearly that if the UK leaves Europe, it will have a tremendous negative impact on workers' rights, not only in Britain, but in Europe as a whole. We all together need to fight Brexit. Let's fight for a united Europe in where the workers stand together. Brexit must not happen. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I must be clear. The forces say it against us, financial, corporate and governmental, intend to roll back the gains in industrial relations made in the 20th century. None of us, as individuals or national unions, can stop them alone. Trade unions across borders and sectors must stand together in opposition with resolve and solidarity. If we do not, the 21st century for workers will more closely resemble Oliver Twist's nightmare of the 19th century. Uni Europa, that is all of our affiliates together, is at the center of this struggle. Our sectors, the services sectors, comprise 70% of all workers in Europe. It is upon us, the services unions first of all, to hold the line. This morning, we saw in the videos the enthusiasm of the people of Europe 60 years ago when the European treaties were signed. And look where we are today. Something is going wrong. 30 years ago only, the single European Act was signed. It put Europe on a path of economic integration. And it also introduced for the, for the first time a requirement at European level that the economic dimension be balanced by a social dimension. That the economy must serve all citizens, improving our living and working conditions. Last week, the Commission finally started a consultation on a European social pillar, finally. But rather than moving forward, they seem to want to cancel 30 years of social progress. We won't accept this. Uni Europa exists and is critical because increasingly the EU is like a nation state with one widely integrated economy and labor market. Our wages and working conditions, industrial relations and collective bargaining are framed by the EU institutions and companies operating across nations. Business and governments use the Euro European Commission to backdoor legislation that could never, that they never could hope to get through the front door of 28 national parliaments. The Commission hides their intentions with harmless sounding names like better regulation. But we are not fooled. If we do not stand up against their agenda, the result will be a less secure, less social and more brutal Europe for our members and all workers. In short, you may not be thinking about Brussels, but Brussels is thinking about you. And they are not sending flowers. We must reverse the course of Europe. Europe is too important for workers to stand idle. Colleagues, Uni Europa is essential. A strong European trade union federation that represents workers' interests in politics and industrial relations as forcefully as you, as forcefully at European level, 
as you affiliates do nationally. What is critical to our work is a broad and activist membership that shapes and participates fully in Uni Europa activities, from the shop floor to the European level and beyond. Uni Europa is the advocate and the champion for European services workers. Uni Europa is more than merely the secretariat in Brussels and Nyon. That is part of it. We should all be proud of the work that our talented, professional, and passionate staff does. Many dedicated colleagues from our affiliates also are engaged in Uni Europa activities. And we thank you all. But it is still only a small group of unionists fighting our battle in Europe. There is a glass barrier between the European level and the national work of our affiliates. Governments and business do their deals on the European side of the glass, affecting all of us. But through that barrier, we only send a few to push back to a little door. It's not enough. What we need is all of us, all of us in this room and seven million of our members, all of our sectors and affiliates, mobilized as one, pushing as one, Let's smash together the glass barrier in Europe. In Toulouse, we said that Uni Europa must be fit for purpose, with greater cooperation among affiliates and across sectors. And we have done this. We have strengthened our capacity to influence EU policymaking. We better coordinate our work in multinationals not least through trade union alliances. We have made headway in organizing unions in Central and Eastern Europe, as in Romania and Poland. With our organizing forums, we have helped affiliates to learn from each other, others' experience in organizing. And we are the leading force in European sectoral social dialogue. During the conference, we will look at these achievements in more depth. However, let me share three achievements particularly. First, the mentoring program for young women, a resounding success based on close cooperation between our women's and youth committee. Uni Europa has been in the lead with the 40 for 40 campaign. We paved the way. Now I call upon you affiliates to use that road to put forward more women into leadership positions at home and in Uni Europa. As the title of our women's conference Saturday said, women's are at the heart of change and at the heart of our organizations. <laughs> Second, we enhanced our communication impact. Last week, we did something new for trade unions in Brussels. We launched a poster campaign in metro stations targeting the commissions for, for mocking our hairdressing social partner agreement. I can tell you, we ruffled some feathers up to the very top, and that is actually fun. You should have a look at the posters outside and do some selfish and, uh, selfies and put it on the website to put more pressure on the European Commission that they don't disregard hairdressers, they don't uh, disregard trade unions in Europe and workers' rights in Europe. And third, among the European trade union federations and with the ETUC, we have built up much closer cooperation, organizing joint, progress, joint projects, including on precarious work, and the European Youth Guarantee Scheme. We have some of my fellow General Secretaries here with us today. Thank you for working together, and it is a pleasure for me to coordinate our work. Uni Europa is not only about Europe. We are the backbone of Uni Global Union. And our strength is that together we are one integrated organization defending workers' interests both in Europe and across the globe. The best example is a Bangladesh Accord. Stronger together in Europe, stronger together with the entire uni family worldwide. We should be pleased with what we have accomplished together in 2011, since 2011, but we are not satisfied. 
We are far from done. The roads let us, have led us from Toulouse here to Rome so that we can light the path ahead for the next four years. The road we are on led through Cape Town and Uni Europa remains fully committed to the living spirit of breaking through. Our intention today, our mission, is to map out the plan to change Europe together. Those who oppose us have amassed great power, the power of money, the power of the state. We believe that change can happen only when we increase our collective power. There are three major things we must do towards this end, the themes of this conference. The first is to grow bargaining power. We do not seek power for the sake of power, but we must increase our collective power in order to change the present and the future. The Commission, governments, the ECB and industry are all out to reduce our power. In particular, collective bargaining is under threat by public and private policies. I see Uni Europa, us together, having the role to reverse this trend. We all need to work together across borders so that all of our unions have the space to conclude good collective agreements that improve the living and working conditions of workers and the families. The 1% have recovered from the crisis. Now the rest of Europe needs a pay rise. The second objective must be growing unions. Despite what the European Commission, right-wing parties and huge multinational companies may believe, Europe cannot succeed without unions. Our unions model democracy, solidarity and progress for Europe. We all agree that Europe cannot succeed socially without unions. What is not said enough is that Europe cannot succeed economically without us. Our unions are the best way to invest the talents of Europeans in our future, in our economy. That is why, despite our challenges, we still have the strongest and largest labor movement in the world. That is why millions around the world look to us to hold fast, to push back the anti-worker, anti-union forces. Organizing is at the heart of what we are doing, but organizing must be the beginning, not the end. Yes, we organize to gain new members, but the true purpose of organizing is to gain new power. A key element here is reversing the trend of the decline of trade unions in Central and Eastern Europe. We recognize that a stronger movement in Eastern Europe not only benefits workers there, but that without one, Western unions are weakened. Actually, since Toulouse, we have seen progress and we are turning the corner. Not least with the help of European works councils, we have established vibrant unions, for instance, in Romania, in the commerce sector and in the finance sector. Later today, we launch our initiative for a central European organizing center, bringing together unions from across Europe to start dedicated campaigns, first in Poland and the Czech Republic, and then spreading out throughout Central and Eastern Europe. Lastly, our goal must be growing quality jobs. We know that when this vision is realized, the result is more innovation, higher competitiveness for our industries, and higher quality services for European consumers. In Toulouse, we set out on developing a vision of the future of the European services industry. That vision is built on sustainability and growth driven by well-paid, skilled jobs in safe workplaces. In 2014, we transformed this vision into our services manifesto. The manifesto puts down clear signposts on social and industrial relations and told how enlightened EU policy and law could foster services-driven growth. With that map, now we will build the road over the next four years. The European services industries need an overarching set of European policies, 
similar to the industrial policies for manufacturing from our colleagues in, in, in industry all. Again, Unieuropa, that is all of us together, is at the center of this challenge. In the digital economy, we do not oppose progress. We oppose the creation of an underclass of workers whose employment is ever precarious, who are forced into fake self-employment, whose work blur the distinction between work time and home, and who have ever less income, security, and social protection. It is upon us, the services unions, representing the vast majority of the workforce to seek an evolution of work where the benefits of higher productivity create broader prosperity, not greater inequality. We fight for a future where technology serves human dignity. Colleagues, the theme of our conference is changing Europe together. And we should be clear about something important. Europe is changing, with us or without us. There's no going back to the ways things were. Europe is changing regardless. Rather than being afraid of change, I charge us all to be excited, even to be exhilarated. The difference we can make is how it changes. A just transition is possible. Too many governments and companies want Europe to change apart, to atomize us, separate us, pit us against each other. For them, alienated and frightened workers are compliant and profitable workers. But we want to change Europe together. At stake is a European model of prosperity and sustainability, of a fair and democratic society. At stake is continuing our European model in times of Euroscepticism, globalization, climate change, and digitalization. Over the last 150 years, we, the trade unions, have built this social Europe. Many put lives and livelihood on the line. We have been innovative, adopting to change and improving living and working conditions at the same time. We will not stop and let go now. In 20 years' time, our Europe and our trade union movement will still be the beacon of hope for workers worldwide. There's one message, colleagues, I ask you to carry home with you from here when we leave. It is simple. We are not bound to the terrible future in that film we saw. We can and we will continue to change the future to the benefit of workers and their families. We work for a better future for everyone, not only for the 1%. We can do this. We stand together. We will change Europe together. Cambiamo insieme l'Europa. Here is the future we can make together. Thank you.